Good day, grade 5. Welcome to our science class. I am Teacher Joey, your virtual teacher for today. Today class, we will travel to another lesson in science. I know and I am sure that you are all excited for another fun-filled learning activities for today. So let us now begin. But wait class, before we start our discussion, try to find a nice and comfortable place inside your home where you can focus with your lesson. I want you to prepare yourself as well as your materials necessary for your study. Kindly bring out your pen and paper so that you could jot down some important notes needed for your learning. Always remember class that having knowledge is having a power. Today, we are going to discuss about weathering of rocks. In your previous lesson, you've learned on how to determine the factors that affect the strength of the electromagnet and you identified that electromagnet is a device made temporarily magnetic by electricity flowing through a coil of wire wound around an iron nail or a bar. And in order to strengthen the electromagnets, you should consider the following. The first one, the coil of wire, current passing through it, nature of core material, and the size of the wire. Look at these pictures. Aren't they nice to look at? What can you say about them? What's the first thing that came into your mind when you saw them? Have you seen similar things like this in your own provinces or in one of your travels in the country? In the first picture, this is the Kapurpurawan rock formation found in Ilocos and the second picture is El Nido rock formation found in Palawan. As you look in the picture class, did you ever wonder what forces carve out these magnificent structures or what changes might have caused these structures to form? What physical and chemical changes have occurred in such formations? And how long did it take for these structures to form? So at the end of this lesson class, you will describe how rocks turn into soil. Compare physical from chemical weathering and explain the effects of weathering on the environment and on living things. Breaking of rocks, shifting sand dunes, eroding hillsides, weeds growing on cemented walls and playground, and muddy water running in gutters are all evidence that Earth's surface is changing. For over several millions of years, the different landforms are destroyed and created. Natural processes, both rapid and slow, cause the changes that happen to Earth's surface. And one of them is weathering as shown in the pictures or illustration. As the saying goes by, the only permanent thing in this world is change. Yes, indeed. Even Earth's surface reveals that it undergoes a continuous process of what you call change. But my question now is, what is weathering? So weathering is refers to the process of breaking rocks into smaller pieces. In other words, class, ang weathering ay ang unti-unting pagkasira ng mga bato. The types of weathering agents can affect our environment. These are substances that break down the, and change the character of rocks that are exposed to the weather and the environment. These agents can be in the form of plants, animals, water, wind, temperature, humans, and chemicals. And weathering can be classified into physical or chemical weathering. 
first to discuss is all about the physical weathering or what you called mechanical weathering. It breaks apart rocks without changing their chemical properties. It changes the sizes and shapes of uh, rocks. So in other words, rocks are broken into smaller pieces without changing their chemical composition. So in this process class, only the physical appearance of rocks is changed. So mechanical weathering involves different process. Just like for examples, we have what you call the wind, the plants, the animals, the water, and human. We have what you call agents of weathering that contribute in the breaking down of rocks. The first is what you call water. So water can break rocks in different ways. So the strong waves hitting the rocks can make it break. So paano nangyayari na nakakakontribute ang water? So the water can seep into the cracks of the rocks. Then pagkatapos niyan, when it gets cooler, this water can expand and turn into ice which can trigger rocks to break as well. So yan yung dahilan kung ang bakit ang water ay nakaka-contribute ng tinatawag na weathering. So number two is what you called wind. As the wind blows, it carries sand or small rock particles that scratch the rock surface. So wind class is another agent of what you called weathering that causes many beautiful formations just like these examples like the Mahayaw Arc in Subtang Island, Batanes and this what you call beautiful formation of rocks. Number three agents of weathering is what you called animals. Burrowing animals such as ants, earthworm, and moles dig their homes in the soil or rocks. In the process, they may expose fresh rock surface to different weathering processes. So we have also other animals just like chickens, just like dogs, or some wild animals. They may scratch on rock surfaces and also expose them to further weathering processes. Number four agent of weathering is what you call plants. Plants grow everywhere, including on rock surfaces. Plants help break down rocks by forcing their roots into the smaller cracks into the rocks. So this is happen class when a growing root may wedge deeply into the cracks and force them apart. So this causes the rocks to crumple into smaller pieces. So number five agents of weathering is what you call temperature. So rocks are exposed to the changes in temperature. Just like when the rocks are exposed to varying temperature, it expands. Then if rocks are exposed to a low temperature, it contracts. So ibig sabihin niyan, when sunlight, during sunlight, there is what you called an expansion of the rocks because of its high temperature. But when during the night time, the rocks cool off because of the low temperature. So the rocks goes in contract. So the repeated expansion and contraction of rocks due to change in temperature may result into weathering of rocks. So number six agents of weathering is what you called humans. So human beings make a lot of what you call change in their environment. These activities will help weather rock. We have such activities may directly break up rocks into smaller pieces or expose fresh rock surfaces to further weathering processes. So some of the activities of the people that break down rocks are what you call the building of roads, making of what you call tunnels, or even mining which really contribute weathering. So let's now proceed to chemical weathering. Chemical weathering breaks down rocks by changing its compositions. We have examples here just like oxidation, 
hydrolysis, and carbonation. In chemical weathering, rocks break up because when there is what you call chemical composition is changed, their structure becomes weak. So the agents that cause the chemical weathering of rocks are found in the atmosphere. It includes oxygen, carbon dioxide, small plants like lichens, and other small organisms. So let's now proceed to the types of weathering which is carbonation. When carbon dioxide in the air dissolves in water, carbonic acid is formed. It reacts with rocks like limestone which dissolves in water easily. How this carbonation happens? So, kapag daw ang air ay nag-combine doon sa water, it form a new substance which is carbonic acid. Ibig sabihin dito, when a carbonic acid comes in contact with rock, it dissolves and removes some of the minerals in rocks and form new compounds at yung new compounds na yun that is what you call carbonate so the formation of carbonates weakens the structures of rocks just like for example so when water containing carbonic acid flows over limestone rocks the carbonic acid may completely dissolve the minerals in limestone called calcite so the calcite now is carried away by the water as a result the structure of limestone weakens and may easily be broken by other weathering processes so nagkakaroon na ng ganitong illustration number two types of chemical weathering is what you called oxidation it is the breakdown of rocks by oxygen and water often giving iron rich rocks a rusty color. So, paano naman nangyayari ito? So, ang oxygen in the air readily nagko-combine siya with the minerals in the rocks. So, the minerals in rocks that readily combine with oxygen are usually the compounds of iron. So, pag ang iron combines with oxygen, of course, rust is form. So, therefore, yung kalawang na yan, it weakens the structures of rocks. So, as a result class, um, it becomes more easily broken down by this, what you called oxidation. Number three types of chemical weathering is what you called hydrolysis. It occurs when acidic water causes the rocks to break producing clay and soluble salts. Ibig sabihin, Kapag umulan daw, syempre pag umulan, there is what you call acidic water, it coats the rocks. Nagkukos siya ng rocks para mag-produce ng tinatawag na clay and soluble salts. Kaya napapansin nyo, yung may mga lupa na clay siya, na, na medyo lumi ang dating. So that is in hydrolysis that cause chemical weathering of rocks. So let's now proceed to the uses of rocks. The first one is sand, gravel, and stone are used for construction and building materials. So as you can see, ginagamit natin ang mga rocks in our building, our home, museum, hospitals, and many more establishment. So next one is large amounts of metallic minerals, particularly iron, are in production of cars planes and boats. So, ginagamit pala yung minerals dito sa rocks in building those machines. Number three uses of rocks is many structures and some outdoor furnitures are made of minerals or rocks. Many things we use every day are made of what you call minerals. So, number four uses of rocks is that arts and crops have been made using beautiful rocks and minerals so those are the uses or the importance of rocks so this time class let us now enrich what you have understand in our lesson for today get your paper and pen with you and answer the following questions